Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for this invitation, for the opportunity to show my film essay, and thanks for watching. It always feels a bit weird to talk after this film, to talk some more after my rambling voice over. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'll try to address some topics brought up by Edwina from EFF. Let's start with the intention of my film. I guess one could say I intended to sum up and bring together my years of artistic research about the curious relationship of ecology and outer space, and specifically a decade of research into the wonderful experiment of Biosphere 2. I hope it became clear in the film that I do think that both outer space ecologies and Biosphere 2 can tell us a lot of things about our current ecological situation here on Earth, about the nature cultures of Biosphere 1. This was an intention, of course. But uh, to be honest, my process is less driven by intentions, but by my own interests, my enthusiasm, my falling into the rabbit holes of research and storytelling. There is intention, which is often informed by educational ideas, learning and unlearning. But then the driving force is my own process of investigation, my own learning and unlearning. What I try to do is to constantly reflect on my process and my own position in it. Who speaks about these topics and why? My practice is very much informed by what I call performative research, which in my understanding, is a form of artistic investigation that's integrating performative and theatrical means like scripts, roles or props. It's very processual and usually I'm working on projects over many years. In this case, I for instance included a lot of Western science fiction movies, pop cultural references that were part of my childhood or that came up in the research process. I tried to re-examine and reinterpret their plots, but also objects like camera technologies, drones, or the retroflective material that's been used in Silent Running's special effects. Specific objects and materials become very important in this process, while I'm trying to research their historical and political context, their situated knowledge, so to speak, but also how I myself am attracted to them and what they do with me while I try to interact with them. The problem with such processual approaches is the question when to stop, when to finalize something, because there's always things I feel underdeveloped or even left out. Like in this case, this film, most narratives are very much from a Western, a European perspective. This is the stuff I grew up with. And it is very much about objects from the past. Even if these objects are speaking about futures, their futures are past futures, often lost futures. And this is where I am right now. And this is what I try to push against. The boundary between the past and the future. The boundary of the present. Which is such an ideologically fortified boundary today. After the global transformations of the 80s and 90s, thinking about alternative futures is still such a hard thing to do, like political alternatives, economic alternatives, ecological alternatives, any emancipatory alternatives to the fortified present state. I became increasingly aware of the tragedy of these past futures while making this film, Extraterrestrial Ecologies, but it became even a bigger issue in the follow-up project, the one I'm working on right now. I started this current project in Japan. And Japan is such an interesting place concerning past futures, a very special place concerning non-Western perspectives and history, and obviously also about the relation of nature and technology. I was looking for a futurist tower in Japan, 
a tower that was built for the World Expo 1917 Osaka. And I was looking for it because its design had inspired the eco spaceship in Silent Running, the 1972 science fiction movie that I discuss throughout ETE. As I found out rather late, this tower had been dismantled some 15 years ago. Nevertheless, I found the site where it once stood in Osaka and where there's still some kind of shadow on the ground. I took photos with a drone and it reminded me a bit of an archaeological survey site. And later on, when I looked at the images, I suddenly thought about the word unearthing. Unearthing. Unearthing means to dig something up, to uncover it and bring it to light. It is a transitive verb, a sort of archaeological action onto an object, also a method of research, be it scientific, journalistic or artistic research. But what if we understand unearthing not related to objects from the past, but pointing to subjects of the future? My current research is focused on a complementary interpretation of unearthing in relation to future life in outer space. I would like to understand it akin to notions of unlearning or decolonizing. Unearthing, used as an intransitive verb, is the transformational process humans have been starting to undergo since the space age. By leaving Earth and at the same time realizing our own planet's importance for life, both human and non-human life. The familiar becomes strange and the strange becomes familiar. Unearthing is triggered by the unknown, by unprecedented distance and isolation and at the same time it creates a new consciousness for caring and sharing. Strangely, this phenomenon has become all too familiar to most of us during the past months of the pandemia. Unearthing was probably realized for the first time by the first Apollo crew going towards the moon and going around the moon and looking back at Earth in 1968 a transformation of human consciousness. It's the result of a most daring thought and activity to leave the gravity of our planetary home and it's deeply entangled in political conflicts and social and cultural struggles of the time, like the Cold War or 1960s revolts. But it also catalyzed a new form of care for global ecology through the blue marble photo of the whole Earth. And it made sharing both an instant local necessity within the isolation of the closed system of the space capsule and a broader future goal, sharing resources on our planet. Obviously, Extraterrestrial Ecologies is a film about space and ecology. But I think it's also very much concerned with storytelling, with the form of the essay as a combination of fiction and reality. And this is also my fascination with science fiction, that it's such a wonderful narrative way of approaching our realities. Science fiction and storytelling in general is shaped by our reality and in turn it shapes reality. Most obviously, the current pandemia shows how strange reality can become from one moment to the next. There were countless series and films about viruses destroying the world, but now reality turns out even weirder. And it's no wonder that right now it's springtime for conspiracy theories. I've often wondered about the strange relation between conspiracy theories and ecology. In their most basic narrative, both are about systems where everything is connected. 
the big difference, at least in my understanding, is that in conspiracy theories there's always a center, a central agent, supposedly controlling everything for their own hidden agenda. In ecology, there is no controlling center. It is a weird mesh of complex and constantly rearranging relations that are totally out of our grasp and control. And I think there is also a big political difference there, and it is an important difference. I think these two discourses are perhaps the two major competing narratives to explain the world today, ecology or conspiracy theory. In this sense, exploring and talking and exchanging about ecology is a deeply political and social issue. Thank you. <laughs>